Oh, Ellie's dead. <laughs> and it's such, I'm sure it was such an intentional thing to call back to the very beginning to where Joel finds himself in this situation again. And after everything that we've been through, it's like, I won't, I won't go through this. And Hands in the air. Just the, again, that irrational, maddening, yeah. desperate calling for help. I need. From this point forward, it's like the beginning backwards. Or if this is the point in Saradise, like now you're about to do the carry sequence. Yeah. Then you like play as Ellie walking, like viewing Joel from yeah. the outside. Well, and then you end on the shot with Ellie. So it's like the beginning reversed. Sorry about that. They didn't know who Let you were. Let me see Marlene again. And Ellie. She's all right. They brought her back. <laughs> uh, the discussions I had with Merle about this scene is, again, her desperation to find someone that will understand, that will empathize with her decision to kill Ellie to save humanity. And she's hoping she could get that out of Joel because he's the only other person that has cared for Ellie the way she has. And she can't get that out of him. I just think it was such a great way to bookend, to kind of start and begin with Marlene. And it's so great that they were able to capture just the strength that she has, even when she was sitting in that chair. And again, she's completely empathetic, even though she's supposed to be antagonistic. It's a very similar line to what David says. Let me do it. You don't have to worry about her anymore. We'll take care I of her. I worry. Just let me see her, please. You can't. She's being pregnant. This is one I've always seen Joel in the most parental the role. Surgery. The doctors tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. Once they remove it, they'll be able to reverse engineer a vaccine. Yeah, her performance here was just stellar. So flawless. It does. Uh, I remember we talking with the, the music guys that uh, were putting a lot of Gustavo's music in. And the first few passes were, there was this dark music that was playing here once Marlene reveals that Ellie's gonna die. And I was like, you can't, we can't play Marlene as bad because she's not bad. She's not. I mean, she's trying to save everybody. And if anything, I told him, I was like, you can go dark with Joel. Because again, when Ellie's life is on the line, Ellie's in danger, he lets himself slip back into the murderer, the killer, however you want to view it. so interesting. I wonder how many players, like, especially in this moment right here, how many sided with Marlene and how many think that Joel was actually the wrong ones. Like, dude, listen to what she's saying. But at the same time, this is the theme of the game for me right here is uh, as a father, you will kill everybody else to save your, 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 your kid. Uh, and that, that has always been kind of the, the through line for me is... Joel's willing to go to the end of the line, meaning sacrifice humanity to save Ellie. Again, Robin, Robin Atkin Downs. Downs. Guess what's gonna happen to him? <laughs> <laughs> but this was so cool too, because I mean, we've seen all the way through both cinematic and gameplay, you know, Joel's able to take on everybody, but just this moment of resolve that I'm gonna wait for my moment. And it almost looks like he's a beaten, defeated person. And that grimace right there. It's like, no, he's not. Which way? Yeah, again, the way you've interpreted Joel is like a man who lets his emotions get the better of him here has to keep them in check. You see how like he wants to destroy this man and everybody here for what they're doing to Ellie, but he has to wait. He has to catch the right moment. I say keep walking. I am. Where's the operating room? And again, just such a brutal scene. There's no threat here. It's just so time. Time is the threat. Now I'll let you die. This scene used to originally be all in the operating room. And Joel wasn't carrying Ellie. He, like, uh, killed Marlene and the doctors in the operating room. And then Peter Field, designer, just kept bugging me. He's like, I feel like we have to play this part. It's, you know, you have to carry Ellie out yourself. You can't just be, like, 
hinted at. And we ended up switching the whole structure of this thing. He was right. It was like it worked way better. That was, that was one of, another one of those moments where we're like, we're done. We've got it. No, we don't. <laughs> as, a, as a cinematic, it, it was, it was, I thought it was perfect. But as, part of, as a bigger part of the game, uh, it was weaker than letting you play through some of it. She won't feel anything. And the only hesitation Joel has is that this is what Ellie wants. And it's such a great decision to show just cut to this, give, you know, give the audience and the player just one last moment of, well, what did he choose? Just to, to, just to sit in that decision. It was also important to show the lie against the reality because the lie has so much weight here at the end. The Throughout the game, Joel has never lied to Ellie. He might have disagreed or he might have dismissed her, but he's never outright lied to her. What happened? And for me, it was, this was the moment I decided to lie. You found the fireflies. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that To me, it, it hurt to say these things. Because once she started believing, once Ellie started believing that I actually had something, that I was someone, you're basically telling Ellie, you're not special, you're not important, and everything you've done was for nothing. I'm taking this home. Yeah, in the first few versions of the scenes, there's like Ellie had all these questions like, I'm sorry. What happened? Why? Who was there? Why would they let you take me out with the gown still on? And. And it just was better if she said nothing. And she just turned her back to him. And again, just to show how far Joel's willing to go to remove any threat for Ellie. I mean, we had talked about this before where, you know, she obviously has that bullshit detector. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like I knew you were lying. You know, I feel like, I feel like Ellie knows you're lying. Oh, the end. So, original ending for this, way back when we put the outline for the story together, is that Ellie believed the lie and they went off to Tommy's and it was kind of like this wide tracking shot as you see them kind of getting smaller and smaller walking off to Tommy's. But as we went through the story and the characters got more and more developed, it's like it didn't feel honest. It didn't feel like Ellie would buy into all of it. And she got bit too. You didn't know what to do. I remember we went over and over and over this scene. And little things changed. But every time I, la I sat and watched you tell this story, I was just you know, raptured by it. It was so easy to listen to you tell this story. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley, and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess. And then Sam. None of that is on you. You don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you, no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Swear to Interesting me. hearing arguments around the office uh, about how people interpreted that last Swear line, that last that okay from Ellie. The Whether it's okay, I believe you, or okay... I could put this behind us, or okay, I don't trust you anymore and it's over. 